Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special event here on Stock Charts TV, where today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Alex Cole and Tyler Wood to talk about one of the brand new additions to ACP, our Go No Go Charts plugins. So thrilled to have Alex and Tyler's work brought to ACP with a very, very exciting, very visual plugin for the new platform. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com. And today is going to be a fun one as we just kind of dive in and get to know Alex and Tyler. They have done so many great demos. And as you're going to hear, they have a new Stock Charts TV show all about Go No Go. So lots of content to, uh, to look for from Alex and Tyler. But today, we're really going to just sit down and talk about the history behind this plugin, talk about how they have, uh, have built all these very powerful indicators and all of that good stuff. So lots to cover. Right now, I want to bring on my good friends, Alex Cole and Tyler Wood. How are you guys? It's so good to sit down with you today. Hey, Grayson. Great to see you. Yeah, yeah really as always. You. Well, uh, you know, to just kind of kick things off, I wanted to uh, hopefully give people a, a, an understanding of who you guys are, where you've come from, your backgrounds and everything like that. Maybe, Alex, we could start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and your history and, and how you've arrived where you are. Yeah, absolutely. So I spent most of my time, probably about 15 years now in, um, in the institutional space, the large majority of that working for Bloomberg and since then in consulting and also uh, more recently was the uh, SME, the subject matter expert for Wiley's prep course for the CMT. So yes. a lot of my time in, in training, really training uh, new hires into Bloomberg, training clients uh, on technical analysis and working with those, uh, those institutional investors, really. That's my focus has been over the last 15 years. Wonderful. Wonderful. And a passion for data visualization, as, uh, as I know you always say. Speaking of data visualization, Tyler, you and your history with the CMT Association. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about your history. Well, like most uh, folks of my vintage that graduated with a liberal arts education, I, I went to get an MBA uh, to try to find a job and uh, was Same. told that technical analysis <laughs> is total voodoo. You want to stay away from it. Of course. Uh, but I had the very good fortune to uh, end up in New York City and find the Market Technicians Association or MTA. Actually, yes. took the MTA subway to get to my job. And now it's called the CMT Association. Uh, so for the last decade, I've been a managing director for the CMT Association, getting to learn from folks like Ralph Acampora and Phil Roth and John Murphy and John Bollinger and many others. And uh, yeah. it's been the best job I've ever had. That's so fantastic to hear. Now, you know, I, I want to know how you guys connected. How, how did you guys originally sort of partner up? How did you meet each other? And, and what kind of sparked the, the creative juices that really brought Go No Go to life? Go ahead, Alex. Well, it's been a long time, I suppose, now. I've known Tyler for well over a decade. Um, and I've presented at a lot of the CMT Association events, from chapter events to right. um, educational webinars uh, to the MTA Symposium in New York. Um, so Tyler and I have been involved uh, in that regard, but also with, our, with my work in Bloomberg, where we would bring the CMT program into as many of our desks as possible. When we were doing the financial sales training program, do a lot of work for, with Tyler to make sure that our guys were as educated as possible in the area of technical analysis. And Tyler would come in and be good enough to, to present to clients and present to, to our groups as well. So many different ways. And also at Wiley, actually, you know, if, <laughs> Better not forget that, you know, we worked together at Wiley on the CMT prep course more recently as well. Yeah. Yeah. Alex uh, was was always an educator. Professor Cole was teaching the new recruits at Bloomberg when I first started at the CMT Association. And so naturally, you know, eight, nine years later, when I was working for uh, John Wiley and Sons and mm -hmm. they were looking for a subject matter expert, it's like I have got just the guy. Uh, and so, yeah, we've we've known each other for quite some time. And yep. then uh, just last year, he, uh, he was talking to me about working on Go No Go charts, which has been an awesome, awesome path. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear. I mean, I, I know Tyler, thinking back to uh, you know the first time that that you shared Go No Go with us, I think it was with uh, on a call with Dave Keller and I. We were yeah. chatting about some things for the CMT Association, and you you brought this up and you showed us just a small preview of what a Go No Go chart looked like, and instantly both of us, I think our jaws hit the floor, and we went that we want that how do we get yeah. that i want to i want more of that where does where do i get that <laughs> so the idea of bringing this to stock charts has just been uh so yes. fantastic it's been so fun to work with you guys and and work on this for uh for many many months too um you know speaking of uh the the plugin and everything i know that we're going to do some demos at the end of this video we're going to have some uh 
some great tutorials and everything from you guys. But at a high level, um, you know, maybe you could just share kind of an overview of, of what the Go No Go tools are, how they work, and um, you know what someone can sort of expect to get as they uh, as they add this to their their charting experience there in ACP. Alex, you want to you want to take it first? You want me to dive right in? Oh, go for it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, for, from our perspective and getting to learn from the best, uh, we get to sit at the right hand of institutional traders and research analysts and the, some of the best asset managers in the business. And to both Alex and I, the thing that came through, you know, over and over and over again is that an overcomplicated process leads to really difficult trading decisions. So yes. the more information you have, the less, you know, you, you want to separate signal from noise. And a lot of right. technical analysts uh, gravitate towards the charts and towards price because it, unlike earnings, it's not restated. It's not an estimate. It's, it's a fact about yeah. what people are willing to pay uh, for a security in the market. So thinking about that and thinking about this incredible library of technical work that the CMT Association has helped advance, uh, certainly not taking credit for the work of all of those uh, great analysts, but Think about what the technical discipline has to offer, wanting all of that information, but then not wanting to have that analysis paralysis or that cluttered chart that we've all uh, been guilty of creating in the past. Uh, Alex, uh, with some really heavy computations and pretty advanced mathematics, uh, put together and blended all of those objective uh, indicators into a really elegant, and like you said, Grayson, that's what jumped off the, the screen to me when he first showed me, is yeah. that it's... It is a really powerful expression, a complete technical view, but it's so elegantly simple. And that yeah. uh, at its most basic level, the name go or no go, right, <laughs> uh, gives you that, is it in trend or is it not in trend? Do we want to be participating with the crowd or do we want to stay away from this? And uh, so that's what, what really leapt out to me was that it's, it's got all the sophistication, all of the powerful uh, indicators built into it, but you have a really clear, concise picture of price. And I think for me, the, the, the important part was that it would help lots of people who are in different roles in technical analysis, because mm -hmm. I would work with <clears throat> new hires into a company, you know, new traders on a desk, and they would want to be learning technical analysis. And they'd be, you know, flooding their charts with indicator after indicator after indicator and just getting lost in that analysis, like you said. But then I would work with really sophisticated technicians who had a really good process, but then their chart became very complicated for them to explain. So for my sure. sort of unique situation of training new people, but also working with sort of fairly advanced technicians, you know, you see the same problem from all sides, that of overcomplication and that of leaving yourself with a chart that, you know, even, even, um, even me, when I would create a chart, I'd end up thinking, okay, now how do I do my traditional technical analysis? How do I look right. for key levels? I can't even see price anymore. You know, how do I find mm -hmm. support and resistance? My chart, everything was just too complicated. So I think it's important that hopefully there's some value in it for everyone. You know, and we started working with uh, pretty sophisticated long short equity fund managers, uh, actually started in the UK. And those folks, they've got a complete fundamental process. They sure. know what they want to be investing in on a fundamental basis, but they're looking for that technical overlay. Uh, that Those were fantastic clients for us because they're not going to spend you know, 80% of their time looking through multiple indicators, they need a more concise uh, rollout of all that technical information. And mm -hmm. then of course, 2020 happened and people were sent home from work and everybody had uh, a stimulus check to, to put into the markets and, you know, anything you bought uh, after June of 2020 went up. And so now we've got this whole universe of self-directed investors, people who are uh, excited about the markets for the first time in you know 20 years. We're, we're right. back to a, a spot that we were in in the late 90s. But a lot of those folks need um, need a tool that's not going to uh, give them those behavioral uh, pitfalls that having too many lines on your chart might might deliver. So yeah. a simple, elegant tool that anybody can understand, uh, I think, was was the main goal, and that's what we're seeing so far in terms of customer feedback and and the users who have it on their charts, uh, it seems to be a, a big part of their process now. Yeah, no, we have absolutely heard that uh, already from so many users. And I, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've, I've always kind of talked to different traders and investors about, you know, why do you share things on social media or why do you write or why do you teach? And I think that the thing that I've heard always from people is communicating what you're seeing in the markets and why you're seeing it, why you're making decisions 
sort of forces you to evaluate your own process and simplify things down, right? Because you can't have this, this giant explanation. So I think you guys have this background in communicating the messages that charts are trying to share. And I, I see that so clearly every time I use the go, no go indicators, it's just such a clear communication tool, whether you're talking to someone else about the markets or whether you're evaluating securities for yourself, you know, it, it really just has this clear communicating message, which is very, very cool to me. Um, you know, one, one other question that I wanted to ask you was kind of, how does this slot into ACP as a whole? What are your impressions of, of ACP as a whole in our, our last couple of minutes here? Um, you know, what have your, your impressions of the, the platform overall been? I'm loving it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, dynamic, interactive, um, the quality of, you know, for me, a particular area of interest, like you said, it's data visualization and just the, right. the quality of the graphics is fantastic. The way the, the colors pop, we've set up a, a template for users, which is, mm -hmm. you know, in our view, going to best reflect the, the go, no go, uh, chart itself and just right. it looks great i mean if this for me as a day, as a visual guy the fact that the platform just looks great uh, is is awesome and then of course ease of use being able to save lists being able to scroll through multiple charts being able yeah. to create different layouts you know the the acp uh, experience has been great for me uh, particularly i'm sure tyler will agree as well but. yeah and i think that the stock charts community uh just goes above and beyond uh, obviously our experience in in integrating these tools into stock charts has been awesome but Alex got to work with Dave back at Bloomberg. Dave was the president right. of the CMT Association when I first started, and right. he's been a great mentor and a friend to both of us. Uh, I've known you for a long time as well, Grace. I know. Uh, so the the community feel of, of what we're building and trying to advance the discipline of technical analysis uh, is just really exciting to be a part of. And I think the fact that the development went so easy and so quickly, uh, I'm excited for for what's to come in the future as well. Yeah, well, that has been absolutely a highlight for all of us, you know, being able to uh, to work with partners like yourselves on these different plugins. It's just been so fun. Speaking of community, you guys are reaching out to our Stock Charts community every week with your new Go No Go show. What can viewers expect on that uh, that show? How is it going to kind of work? And uh, and what are you uh, hoping to bring to uh, to people's sort of viewing experience there with the Go No Go show? Well, neither Alex or I are uh, professional money managers. So uh, we're not out there winning trading competitions and trying to teach you our method for how to trade the markets. That's not what the, the purpose is. Instead, we've learned from the best about taking a, a responsible top-down approach to technical analysis. Uh, every week we write uh, newsletters and, and uh, distribute chart packs to our clients. Uh, so on the Go No Go show, every Thursday afternoon, we, we basically look at how things are panning out based on our analysis that, that went out Monday morning. Uh, so it's a current market show, but just using go -no go charts, looking at what's trending in the market and, and where we're seeing opportunities to get in on either the long side or the short side, if that's part of your game. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I think that the, the most powerful package that we can bring to people with these plugins is, is when there's a, a product, a tool, something that they can actually use in their own process but then also combining that with weekly content from you guys, you know, directly from the brains behind that product, um, you know, it, it makes it uh, really this kind of powerful educational package as well. Because it's not just here's a hammer, go hit everything and see how it looks. Um, you know, it's it's actually instruction on top of that. So I love that you guys are, are working with us on this Doctorates TV show. It's so exciting to have the combination of these two really kind of go no go everywhere throughout stock charts. I love that being able to reach our community. Um, you know, guys, I, I wish we had another seven hours to keep talking, but uh, unfortunately we're out of time. I know we do have a fantastic demo coming up here. So I'm excited to, uh, to jump over to that. Um, but for all you viewers, I do want to let all of you know, uh, again, the Go No Go Charts plugin is here. We've actually got two different ones, a free version, the Go No Go Char Charts Starter Pack and then also the uh, the full complete kit with all of the go no go charts indicators so you can find all of that at stockcharts.com/marketplace look for our plugin page and you can find uh, the go no go charts pages right there easy to install into your acp experience also look for the go no go chart show every thursday 3:30 p.m. eastern time on stock charts tv all the different ways to watch that our youtube channel the on demand platform lots of different ways to engage uh, Alex, Tyler, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. It has been a pleasure. I look forward to even more Go No Go Charts goodness coming very soon with the show, maybe even some other tools that we're going to be bringing out in the future as well. So uh, much, much more coming from these guys. 
Thanks viewers, you thank you so much. We're going to jump over to that demo now and take a look at Go No Go Charts in action. Thanks, Grayson. Hey, Alex Cole, my partner, my friend. How are you doing today? Partner in crime, I hope not. But uh, yes, how are you? I'm doing fantastically well because StockCharts.com now offers Go No Go Charts as a plugin in their ACP platform. Let's tell uh, let's tell everybody in the Stock Charts community all about what they can expect from Go No Go Charts. How's that sound? Sounds fantastic. Now, uh, we've all seen a chart like this, perhaps even created charts like this in our own process. Because technical analysis offers a robust selection of different indicators that could help you identify, capture, and measure the, the velocity and the, the uh, persistence of market trends. The problem with having a chart like this is that it creates analysis paralysis. Uh, when I first started with the CFT Association about 10 years ago, Ralph Akampora came in and told the story about being the new chief market strategist at a large uh, financial services institution. And he was walking around the trading floor, kind of glad handing everybody. And this young trader uh, had about six vertical monitors in front of him. Each one had 100 panels below the, the price chart, lines going this way and that. And Ralph leaned over and he said, wow, son. That's incredible. I've never seen technical analysis done like that. What is it that you're looking for? And the kid kind of looked both ways and said, sir, don't tell anybody, but I have no idea what all this gobbledygook means. I just know that my boss thinks I'm really busy and working super hard and that I'm a genius. So I keep all these busy charts around. And Alex, I know you ran across some of this, uh, perhaps less comical, uh, but yeah. really the same kind of analysis paralysis that comes from overcrowding on the chart. Absolutely. And I think it, it hits on all different angles and different different people within the industry. Uh, the people that are new, like the, the gentleman that you uh, were just referring to, trying to learn and trying to understand what's happening, but overcomplicating their charts and just, you know, getting to a point where they really have no idea what they're looking at. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got very, very uh, seasoned, experienced, uh, very good technical analysts who are building charts that make an awful lot of sense. And, you know, I, I would hope that I was trying to do that earlier on in my career. And I myself would end up with charts that just had six panels and too many indicators. And I would talk to sell-side research analysts who were trying to explain their process of recommending buys to their clients. And the, they've gone through their checklist. They've built a fantastic chart, but the clients were having a hard time understanding um, what they were trying to say, just because the charts were so complicated. So you've got it on both ends of the spectrum. People just don't understand and are trying to learn and overwhelming themselves with too much an analysis. And then the people that are doing a really solid job and going through their process to find the securities and situations that they like, but then are left with a chart that's hard to understand or hard to explain. Right. And this is the, this is the element of having a rules-based or a disciplined process that you have a checklist and yeah. from the technical perspective you're going to use those indicators to let you know when the trend has been broken or ended or is about to reverse that's, right. that's responsible use of the technical toolkit unfortunately as human beings the more we put on the chart the more difficult it is to be disciplined in actually making the trade decision because you can always find an indicator or a line on that chart that's going to uh, confirm your bias if you're looking to stay long or looking to get out uh, the, the additional tools on the chart just create that analysis paralysis that we all want to avoid. Yeah. So Alex, let's jump in. Let's talk about the solution from Go No Go Charts, starting first and very simply with Go No Go Trend, a tool that you've created meticulously over years, blending uh, statistically tested, tried and true technical yep. indicators. Tell us what we're looking at here with the Go No Go Trend chart. Yeah, as you mentioned, it came out of my desire to create a chart that gave me all of the information that I'd grown to value uh, in working with people uh, in institutional desks uh, all around the world, but keep it simple and keep it a chart that I could read and a chart that I could do technical analysis on. So mm -hmm. uh, the go, no, go trend blends objective measurements with the real foundational concepts of technical analysis and then color codes the chart according to the strength of its trend. Mm -hmm. And when you when you do that, you, you're left with price still being the focus of the chart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really important uh, for when we're looking at securities. Absolutely. So as a quick review, 
You see on the left side of the chart, that strong bullish trend that's going to fall in two colors. The bright blue, that's the strongest trend conditions, and then the lighter aqua means that it's weakly bullish or a, a softer version of that uh, go trend. You see on the right side of the chart, uh, the pink and purple bars, that's the no-go trend coloration. Again, purple being the strongest no-go conditions, pink being the lighter uh, bearish conditions. And then right here in the middle, typically happening around a, a point of neutrality or even a change in the trend direction, you have these amber bars. And uh, Alex and I are both uh, big fans of Jesse Livermore and some of the uh, the great titans of, uh, of Wall Street. Jesse has a saying that uh, there's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to go fishing. So consider those your go fish bars. The market is not trending, uh, and until that resolves in one direction or the other, really difficult to uh, uh, to be profitable in your trading. So that's the complete go no go trend. But of course, Alex, there's a lot more to the suite of go no go uh, tools. For yep. users of Stock Charts ACP, you can pick up this free go no go trend template right on the right on the StockCharts.com website in the ACP plugins. But let's talk a little bit about the rest of the suite of tools and how they complement each other, beginning with the go no go oscillator. Yep. So of course, when you try the idea of creating one chart that gave me a complete overview of any asset, any security, any periodicity from a technical perspective, led me to required me to include momentum analysis. Mm -hmm. So after trend identification, which is going to be the most important thing we can do, uh, analysts will turn to momentum to get a sense of the velocity of price change, and that can give us some real insight into the strength of any move. So just like any uh, momentum oscillator, we can identify extremes of overbought and oversold that'll pull out the peaks and troughs uh, that you see in price. But you can also quickly identify divergence, higher highs in price, lower highs, let's say in the oscillator. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also incorporated volume. So we wanted to make sure that just as with the trend indicator, we blended all of the most tried and true and tested and my favorite uh, momentum indicators into only one oscillator that could give us this traditional sense of momentum. And then, of course, we wanted to include volume, um, hearkening back to the days of Charles Dow when we, he was first talking about volume as a confirmatory tool to mm -hmm. understand price action. So in our oscillator, you'll notice that when the color changes from aqua to a darker blue, that indicates heavy volume. And, and then you can use that just as you would other uh, volume analysis, a break of a trend line on heavy volume. Does that carry more weight uh, and, and other ideas like that? So the oscillator is like the trend, a blend of momentum inputs that gives you an overall sense of momentum analysis. Brilliant, Alex. And that concept of blended indicators to keep your focus right on the price action itself. After all, it's only price that pays. Let's talk for a second about what trend following investors are really trying to do, right? They want outsized winners and they want to cut losses short, which is a very simple idea, but very difficult to execute. Sure. So within the go no go oscillator, I know there's really important and tons of information when the oscillator reaches that zero line. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about neutral readings in a trending environment for a momentum oscillator. So if you've studied oscillators, you'll know they were designed to provide uh, help in range bound sideways markets. We were taught that that's when they were successful to identify peaks and troughs. And we would use them in a mean reverting kind of way to find situations where price had moved too quickly in one direction. But so much research was done by people like Connie Brown, who wrote a great, great uh, work of, of uh, research on using momentum indicators in trend. Uh, because they're so well used by everybody in our industry. And yes, they do have value when looking at a trend. And what was found was that these momentum oscillators, whether it's RSI, stochastics, whatever you might be looking at, they will range when in a trend. So if you are in an uptrend, something like the RSI will go overbought because that makes all the sense in the world, excessive mm -hmm. buying, enthusiastic buying when a trend is in place to the upside. And then the oscillator will go into neutral territory. It shouldn't go oversold. Oversold would suggest excessive, aggressive selling, which doesn't make so much sense in a healthy uptrend. 
So what they found was that these oscillators would range from overbought to neutral, overbought to neutral when in an uptrend, and oversold to neutral, oversold to neutral when in a downtrend. Mm -hmm. What's difficult about this is that these oscillators are very choppy, and you would have to identify in a, a subjective level on your chart to give you those support levels in a trend. Mm -hmm. So what was found was, roughly speaking, an RSI might range from, let's say, 40 up to 80. But then you get the, the problem of subjectivity. If an if oscillator moves down to 41, 42, 43, does that count as touching support? What if it goes to 37 or 38? Has that broken support? Um, mm -hmm. And all these oscillators are different. And I worked with people that would shift those levels based on the markets they were trading or mm -hmm. the securities that they were looking at. So it introduces a level of subjectivity. Mm -hmm. What we wanted to do was create the oscillator in a way that causes the indicator to fall to a objective level, the zero line, when all the inputs of the oscillator are in their neutral territory. So when we evaluate all the different things that go into this go no go oscillator, if they are in neutral territory, the go no go oscillator will fall to the zero line when in an uptrend or rise to the zero line when in a down or no go trend. And that gives us an objective level of support and resistance, which as you said, hopefully allows people to stay on the right side of the trend for longer. Yeah, and, and investing is often a game of regret. Uh, when, you, when you've had a winning trade and, uh, and you uh, cash in those gains, uh, you regret not holding on to it longer as, uh, as the trend continues. This objective tool, uh, and again, the inputs to the price trend and the go-no-go -go oscillator are independent but related. And so you can see as uh, as this go trend persists, uh, it takes the stairs on the way up, uh, uh, gaining in price and then consolidating those gains or digesting uh, big moves upward. Uh, you see that corresponding in the go no go oscillator as it reaches the zero line. Every time it finds support at the zero line in an uptrend, in a go trend, we're going to look for these nice visual cues that let us know we've got a trend continuation, momentum resurging in the direction of the underlying trend, which tells us that's a great uh, buy the dip opportunity. Uh, and that's the, been the great question uh, of the last uh, last couple of years for investors is uh, when, when things are really rolling over and beginning a new downward trend or whether we are just uh, experiencing another buy the dip moment. And here you have an objective review of where momentum is just reaching neutrality and then resurging. So Alex, let's talk a little bit about these go-no-go -no -go icons uh, that relate to yep. the oscillator in the lower panel. So there's two types of icons. The first we're gonna highlight are trend continuation icons. And those on this chart are the green circles. If we were in a no-go, they would be red circles. But what they do is highlight the return of momentum in the direction of the trend. And that's the powerful part. We've seen a rally in price, it's consolidated, cooled off, and then we see that resurgence of momentum in the direction of the trend that we're in. Mm -hmm. The second type of icon on here is, of course, as we just discussed with momentum analysis, there's a lot of value to be found in traditional momentum analysis. So we wanted to highlight situations on the chart as well, where we're using the oscillator in a more traditional sense. These are called counter trend correction arrows. And so when an oscillator goes overbought and comes back into neutral territory, we are suggesting with these icons then that there may be a short-term period of counter-trend correction as investors, like you said, likely digest gains. If we were in a no-go trend, those counter-trend correction arrows would be green. Absolutely. So we've got trend, we've got momentum, we've got these icons queuing us up. There's one more piece to the suite of go-no-go -go charts, and that would be the volatility-based indicator of go-no-go -no -go squeeze. And we know that uh, in that tug of war between buyers and sellers, when volatility becomes really compressed, a resolution in one direction or the other uh, is typically followed. It's a higher probability that we'll have a, a, a strong advance or decline following the resolution of a low volatility period. So Alex, you captured that as well with the go-no-go -no -go squeeze in this orange grid. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what you look for in the go-no-go -go squeeze uh, when you're charting. Yeah. It occurred to me that that was the piece that I really wanted to add once I uh, once we had the, the trend and the oscillator. Uh, volatility is very, very important, but I, we wanted to do it in a way that didn't add anything uh, to the chart in terms of distracting you away from price. So we built it into the panel uh, where the oscillator is. 
And I always thought of it as squeezing a tube of toothpaste. If you compress that tube of toothpaste, eventually the top's going to blow off. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think of things like volatility squeezes. You might be familiar with Bollinger bands tightening, and then we trade in the direction of the break or the Keltner band squeeze. These mm -hmm. are all familiar ideas in technical analysis. So with our go, no go charts, we know the importance of the zero line already. We know that when the oscillator hits zero, we've identified a time when all of the inputs to that oscillator are in neutral territory. Mm -hmm. So when the oscillator stays at the zero line, that's really significant. So we call that riding the zero line. When the, when the price action uh, shrinks and volatility is reduced, the oscillator will often ride the zero line and that causes the go, no, go squeeze the orange grid to climb to its max and stay there. So for every bar that the oscillator is staying at zero, the grid of the go, no, go squeeze will climb to its extreme. And then we're able to then quickly look for the breakout. Uh, will it be in the direction of the trend? Will it be a renewed surge of momentum in the trend? In this case, that would have been to the downside. Uh, when that doesn't happen, then that's a real cause for concern for the trend that you're in. And in this case, we see that that break out of the squeeze is a leading indicator and tells us that momentum has now, uh, we're seeing a surge of momentum in the other direction uh, from the trend that we're in. And that, of course, leads to a breakout in the, in the new go trend that we see on the chart. Fantastic, Alex. A checklist of trend, consolidating all of those indicators into a single price uh, color-coded uh, price chart. We see the consolidation of all the momentum indicators into the go-no-go -no -go oscillator, the inclusion of volume, the inclusion of a, of a volatility squeeze. And Alex, what we're seeing on this chart includes way more information uh, than the busy chart we saw at the uh, beginning of this session. Uh, one other thing that I, I think is worth pointing out is that as with all technical indicators, they should work uh, because of the fractal nature of markets across any time frame. So this could be a, a monthly chart or a five minute uh, bar chart. Uh, it really doesn't matter that the trend conditions and all the inputs are going to work the exact same way. And I think it also uh, makes sense to, to note to our listeners that whether they are trading cash settled butter futures or uh, they're trading Apple uh, shares, it's going to work the same across all asset classes and any uh, highly liquid security. So Alex, I really want to appreciate uh, your time this afternoon. Thank you for uh, for doing this with us. And let all of our StockChartsTV.com watchers uh, know that they can find this as a new plugin on StockCharts ACP. Thanks so much, Alex. And we'll see you again real soon. Thank you, sir. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.